Hi. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> What's the matter? Getting excited to finish my last project, which is probably gonna take me a month, but who cares, right? Oh, I'm crooked. Hey, how's that? Story of my life. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You're probably a subscriber, and I appreciate you so much, you have no idea. Today, we're on the, the last official breed study, episode 15. Can you believe it? It does seem like just yesterday I unboxed it. <laughs> this year, okay, 2021 is nearing half over five months in already and I seriously feel like it's just flown by. I don't understand because it shouldn't have flown by. So much has happened. Just in case this is your first video, I'm sorry if you've watched all 15 and you don't want to hear this again. Maybe you can skip through, maybe you can stand it, I don't know. But below you will find a link to this official breed study you will find a link to the fleece and fiber source book that's the book i'm using for my primary information source for this and you will find a link to a playlist so if this is your first video and you're like oh my gosh i missed it oh no you can go back you can watch any of them anytime you want and you're not behind you're exactly where you're supposed to be so don't worry about that there's no such thing as behind here that's why it's all available so that you can do this when you have time and enjoy it and not feel like oh i gotta get this done because trust me that's no way to live that's how i live every day <laughs> i'm joking i'm getting so much better i'm really getting better at my times it's nearing the end of may we just opened our pool and guaranteed us a couple days of rain which is totally fine. Um, we can actually use the rain. We've had a kind of drier spring than normal. Our grass was getting crispy, so we're not complaining. It's fine, everything's great. But we are actually here to talk about wool. So let's talk about wool, shall we? Today, we have two breeds. We have the white face woodland. Is that upside down? No. So white face woodland. And then we also have the Zvartbliss. Zvartbliss whatever I'm close enough right we're gonna start with the white face so I am again reading from the fleece and fiber source book sometimes this is read directly mostly paraphrased okay I try to tell you but I don't always get it perfect the white face woodland is a breed that comes from the southern end of England the the Pennine Mountains uh, there are a couple different breeds of sheep that are from this area this is considered a reliable that is a quote breed which means it's good for like everyday items so to me that means a little bit sturdier a little more woolly a little more rustic but not like saddle blanket material if you're following me I think you are they used to be known as penny stone sheep they're a conservation breed the numbers have gone down a lot in the 1970s it says there was hardly any it was almost extinct and then listed endangered it's made a bit of a comeback since they listed it as endangered that's kind of cool so they're raised primarily for meat a lot of the reliable type breeds for everyday woolen items are meat breeds like a lot of these I mean we haven't had these this exact wording but like a lot of the breeds you just have to just decide what you can use it for by how it feels and how it behaves like fleece to fleece or your source to your source because there's a wide variation in the actual like range that the breeding society gives there's kind of a wide range there this is a quote michael Ryder in sheep and man which is a book confirms this broad range within the breed and calls the fleece from white face woodlands a hairy medium wool i would say this does feel pretty medium in the coarse range coarseness range so they tested more than one sample for this book which they don't always do or at least they don't always talk about and they said the more hairy sample um was off the scale for coarseness and it would make great rug warp or it would be good in like textile artwork which actually usually means like you don't want to wear it you know what i mean and it says four for four pillows but it does felt i would say this is not 
so coarse where I would be like, this is definitely cannot be clothing. But again, I'm kind of a middle of the road prickle factor person. White face woodland facts. The fleeces are four and a half to six and a half pounds. So I'd say pretty much medium range. Um, three to eight inches, that's a very wide range. 28 to 38 microns or coarser. I guess that means 28 to 38 is like the norm and then you can also find them coarser maybe. It doesn't actually say that, but that's how I would interpret how they have it written. Lock characteristics, open locks, crimp patterns present. So you can see the crimp. Sometimes they're very disorganized and it just looks like a big tangle, even though it's not really a tangle. Relatively organized and semi-coordinated semi in the locks. They're cute though. Look at this ram. Look how cute he is. Those curly horns are just the cutest thing. I mean, those curly horns. Right down by his cheeks. Dyeing will take colors nicely, except perhaps for some Kemp-like fibers at the coarsest end of the range. I don't see any Kemp, but I will keep you informed on the finished part. The fiber prep and spinning approaches depend entirely on where your fleece falls in the range. So we've had this before. They've never said it exactly like that, but there are so many that have a lot of variation in the breed. And so, or they've been developing for a really long time in different bloodlines, and there's gonna be a wide range. This is just the way it goes. Also, it says, depending on the fiber profile, again, you could do pretty much everyday garments to rugs, ropes, or bags best known for varied range of wools all white all especially good for something in the hands of a creative person I've been saying that from the beginning right it's all good for something it's just you got to get creative sometimes to find the right thing for it so I'm actually feeling like it's similar to the Cheviot or maybe some Columbia that I've had in the past. It's all, this particular is also like a coarser Corydale kind of. Okay, let's check a staple length. I use my ruler to measure something weirdly shaped. So let me straighten it and then we'll check a staple length. Okay, so I am gonna guess it's like four to five maybe. Okay. So it's about five and a half. Five and a half inches. And again, I've showed you this before. You can see that when I pull it straight, it's one thing and then it really fluffs up quite a bit. I expect this yarn to have a lot of loft. I do think, I think I'm gonna go ahead and spin this like with a short woolen draw. So that means I'm gonna let the twist go into the fiber supply, but I'm gonna still draft it with my front hand. You guys have seen me do it before. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one. Let's go spin it. So we're finished. As you probably saw, I did this, I did spin this with a short woolen draw. I had 44 yards. I am actually very happy with this. To me, it's only slightly coarser than I would want for a sweater. It would maybe be okay for like an outer sweater, so a cardigan or something that's definitely not gonna be up against my skin. It isn't particularly prickly per se, but it's definitely a little, less soft than I would like. But I will say this, it's got a lot of good bounce, even spun straight from the top, which is more challenging for about the bounce factor. And it is very squishy and it was easy to spin. I could spin woolen straight from the top with this. I did just slightly like loosen it up by fluffing up the fiber all the way down, but 
I mean, it's really actually pretty nice. It's got a little bit of a halo. I only found one piece of Kemp and I can never be sure if I just find one piece if it came from something else because the Swaledale and the Herdwick both dropped quite a good amount of Kemp. <laughs> they both dropped quite a good amount of Kemp as I was spinning so I suspect that they were like shedding Kemp in the box if that makes sense. I, I can't really be sure. I would say for me, only for me, these are all just opinions really. It's probably, if I was gonna make a garment, I probably would go with something just a tiny bit softer, but otherwise all the characteristics are very nice. And that means it would make a lot of nice bags, tons of other things that would be great. So, um, so I liked it, it was great. I don't know what else to say, it was great. <laughs> I would spin it again. The more I mess with it, the more I'm like, no, it's not so bad. And very squishy, and it was an enjoyable, nice spin. And we're on to the Zvart Bliss. I'm just feeling it. So this is also known as a reliable wool. Okay, before I start with the Zvart Bliss, I have mentioned this in the comments, but I've never told you guys. I grew up in a community in Michigan that was settled by Dutch immigrants, I don't know how long ago. I don't know. I don't wanna say, cause I don't remember, we learned it in school. Sorry, some of that stuff doesn't stick. Almost everyone I grew up with had a Dutch last name. Almost all the communities I grew up had Dutch names. So I do kind of feel like if I don't get the Dutch names right, like I'm a failure, even though I'm not Dutch. Okay, so the Zwartbliss, they were developed crossing short-tailed Frisian milk sheep and the horned and hairy face Drent. There is actually a town very close to where I grew up, maybe like 10 minutes from where I grew up called Drent. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it in the Netherlands, but that's how we pronounced it here. Actually, this is a little known and crazy fact about my growing up. It's not weird to anybody who's lived around us, but there's a festival in the town in the next town that I grew up in, like right next door, called the Tulip Festival. And so everyone in the region, all the high schools, you can actually do, oh, this sounds so weird. You can actually do a sport called Dutch dance. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys a picture because I have pictures. I did this sport for I think two years. So for like months up until the festival, you meet after school with your group. I can't remember how many people were in a group. Maybe it's 16, I can't remember. And you dance, <laughs> you practice this dance and then um, you can Google it or maybe I'll look for it and find a link for it, I don't know. And then you, during that week of that festival, you get scheduled to dance like all over town. And then, <laughs> so crazy, you walk in some parades, you do all this dancing, you dress up like you came from a Dutch community. I wore a costume called the Volendam. <laughs> you get a letter, so that's a, that's a, how do you explain that to people in other countries? When you're in high school and you play varsity sports, you get a letter. Um, to put on your, your varsity jacket or whatever, and I think they still do it, I don't know. And then you get pins, once you have your letter, if you do more sports, you get pins to add to your letter. So I lettered in Dutch dance. <laughs> and cheerleading in high school. Cheerleading and then JV and varsity Dutch dance. That's all I did for sports. <laughs> anyway, that's my Dutch story. It says in the 90s, British Shepherds imported the breed, so they're in Britain too, and it's that has made the fiber more available throughout the world. So it says medium to fine with excellent crimp, very springy, unusually dark quality to its black color. I don't know how well this is gonna show up, I never know. Because the little screen on my camera, it doesn't always look the same uh, when I up upload the footage. It's actually a really, really dark brown with maybe just the slightest little bit of red to it. It says, considered a workaday wool, I mean, that makes sense, for durable hats, mittens, gloves, and cardigans, also household textiles for strength, this is a quote, with reasonable tactile appeals. I'm saying it's in the mid-range. I think it's a, probably a little bit finer 
than the white face woodland it feels a little softer sometimes like I've said before the micron does not tell the whole story so I'm hesitant always to just assume that it's gonna be softer just because the micron count is different but I would say this is a little softer and it's a really pretty color Zvartless facts the fleece weight is six and a half to ten pounds so definitely on the bigger end they must be a bigger shape the staple length four to five inches so a little bit shorter Ooh. micron counts it says for the most part high 20s and low 30s so very in the middle so they sent some samples to a lab i guess maybe they did that for all of them i don't know they never said that um, it came back with an average fiber diameter of 35.4. Locks are blocky, well-developed, slightly jumbled crimp. Tips may be sun bleached, but that happens a lot in darker fleeces, just normal. Oh, but it says, but because the fleeces are so dense, the bleaching doesn't go way down deep into the staple. That makes sense. Colors, black shading to brown, especially on the sun bleached tips of the locks with some silvery or white. There is a little bit of white in here. Oh, but it says the Zvartbliss Sheep Association in Great Britain says any white is undesirable. But I do have some white and actually I find it quite desirable. So whatever. You can dye it, but it says it's pretty pointless because of the natural dark colors. Fiber prep and spinning tips. It says that because of the type of fleece and the length being like kind of so middle of the road for all of it, you can just prepare it however you want. For me, what I would do is prepare it based on how I want my finished yarn to come out. It says the biggest challenge is the bounce factor from the type of crimp. And it says it's suitable for durable everyday garments and household textiles so actually same very similar usage as the white face woodland it says the springiness will make the fabric resilient best known for intensely black wool wait a minute did i have a picture you guys there's no picture hang on let me get a picture off the internet i found a picture online it is from the zvartbliss sheep association.org it's actually zvartbliss.org all right, so let's check a staple. Based on what I read, I think I'm gonna go ahead and card this and spin it with a true long draw because I wanna get it really bounce. It looks like it's gonna be very bouncy and I really definitely wanna take advantage of that. Okay, so it, it is quite short compared to a lot of the other ones. Um, I mean, I can get out, well. Oh, that's a little too far, okay. So I'm gonna measure, let's measure it. It is, it, it, this is also five and a half inches, the same as the, um, the white face woodland. So I'm going to card this one. And I think this is also a fun thing just to see the comparison. So we'll be able to compare two wools that seem pretty similar. And one will be spun um, from top with a woolen draw. And the other one will be from a stripped bat uh, spun long draw and we'll see if there's any difference. All right, let's go. Here is the yarn. You can see this does have quite a few white fibers in it. I kind of like that. I feel like it gives it just a little bit more depth. Um, when it's really, really dark and not reflective, a lot of times it looks a little flatter. So the white gives it some 
depth is the only word I can think of that really makes sense. I, I have to say, this surprised me a lot. I absolutely felt like it spun itself. I do think it's possible that that's at least partly due to the fact that I carded it. So everything was like loose and fluffed up and it just flew out of my hands as I was spinning. I did do a long draw spin with this. And I will say also, I thought I'd show you guys because I expected these two to come out extremely close based on the descriptions as far as how much like bounce and bounce back and spring and everything it had. So this has a lot of spring, but it got a true long draw and it got carded. So the fibers got disorganized first and that all helps with the springiness, okay? This one did not get carded first. So it, there is a pretty significant difference in how much these did spring back after winding. The Zwartbliss, I had 61 yards also. So I am not even sure, it, to me it doesn't make sense because again, with the descriptions, I would have expected them to come out so close and so almost the same. It's just really surprising. Nonetheless, I absolutely loved this. Again, it is not soft. I would call it like a middle ground. Definitely could be a sweater. John minds the prickles less than I do, and for him, this could 100% be a sweater, no problem. I mean, he'd wear a t-shirt underneath it. I loved spinning it. I felt like it was just, I've said it before, it was just spinning itself. Like, I was just treadling the wheel, and it was just, it just was really flowing for me, this particular breed. So I loved it. I don't even think it's available in the US except like coming in from another country. I could be wrong, I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever seen a fleece for sale in the United States, but um, I loved it. And if I had the opportunity, I would jump on a fleece because this was so nice to spin. I really recommend it. It's very squishy also, but I would not be afraid to try and dye this. I think you probably would get just like a sheen of another color, which could be really cool. I have dyed black fleece with burnt tips before. In fact, I have some in my stash still, and I keep hoping that I'll have time to card it up into a bat with some other fun things so that I can show you guys how that works when you dye something with the burnt tips. And I'd also like to test how much it felt. It would be very interesting. I'm kind of thinking that we're gonna go we're gonna do a series where we try out uh, some different breeds and see how well they felt if washed in a washing machine or how ill they felt. I hope you're not sad that this is done. It really isn't done because I have planned so many species, so many fibers that are plant fibers. Just there's so many fibers to come. I am just gonna start doing these once a month instead. And that is actually gonna free me up to be able to spin more because I kind of always felt like I shouldn't tie my wheel up with a spinning project unless I knew I was done for the next week. Also, I'm gonna start working on the next video in this series, which is going to be a month out, which will be the dying. So I hope you guys will join me this weekend. Q&A coming. I have like a page and a half of questions. Get your stuff, have a seat. The video's coming Sunday afternoon. I will see you guys this weekend. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I can't wait for the next phase of this project. And I thought before we go, I would show you guys, this is the entire box of finished little hanks of yarn. Just look at this. Look at all we did together. Look at it. We did all this. Can you believe it? This whole box, all I can say is thank you so much for coming along on this crazy ride with me. It has been awesome. I have learned so much and I have learned a lot about you guys too, which is kind of interesting. I'm excited for what's to come. I appreciate you all. Thanks, I love you, bye.